What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out how The Rock versus Stone Cold changed WWE Forever, a wrestling documentary by Off the Top Rope. Uh, I saw this in my sub box a while back. I was like, you know what? I need to make time to check this out because The Rock and Stone Cold, arguably the greatest uh, feud in wrestling history. These two individuals definitely carried wwe in the attitude era and everyone knows who the rock and stone cold is everyone knows their legendary feuds back and forth segments promos matches we all know the history and even people that don't watch wrestling anymore know who the rock and who stone cold is that's how influential they were to the wrestling business as a whole and they're my favorite wrestlers <laughs> stone cold is 1a the Rock is 1B. You can you can switch them out. So we're going to check this out, man. We're going to go back down memory lane because I'm looking forward to just reliving some of these great moments from these legendary wrestlers. Should be an interesting one. I'm going to link the original video down below. Make sure you guys go check out Off the, uh, off the Top Rope. Give them a subscription. Let's get right into this one, man. March 30th, 2003, a sold out stadium erupted in cheers and chants as the world watched in awe as two legends stepped into the squared circle one last time. The mm. energy was palpable and the anticipation was unmatched. WrestleMania 19 brought together the two biggest names in the WWE Universe at the time, Stone yep. Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. These two superstars had defined an era, setting the wrestling world ablaze with their charisma, intensity and rivalry. They had engaged in mm -hmm. multiple battles before, but this time, the Stakes were higher than ever. The story of this epic rivalry begins with The Rock and Steve Austin initially not striking a chord with their audience during the first few years of their career. And While Steve spent his initial years of his career in WCW, he was highly underrated. Regardless of how good he was in the ring, Steve was never seen as the guy that could take Stunning WCW Steve to Austin. new heights. For the company, he was just a wrestler who switched factions until he was eventually released in 1995. And The Rock on the other hand had a football background and was a third generation superstar. And when The Rock made his debut, <laughs> as Rocky Maivia in 1996, it didn't take long for the blue chipper to realize that fans were not in love with his persona at all. Being nope. portrayed as a happy babyface all the time didn't really connect with the fans at the time. However, their identical drive for success, both wrestlers realized that they had to take things more seriously if they wanted to make it to the top of the mountain. So as time passed on, both The Rock and Steve Austin began working much more serious gimmicks for themselves as they were utilizing every opportunity mm. that was presented to them. Yeah, in Austin's case, aiming. After being released from WCW, Steve would join Paul Heyman in ECW yep. for a short time, and he used this period to work on his promo skills and character work. After his time in ECW was up, Steve would come to WWE under the Ringmaster yep. name. And while the reception of this gimmick wasn't strong either, Steve knew he would have to change things up if he wanted to be seen as a top guy. In his own words, the Ringmaster gimmick just wasn't marketable. Steve wanted to be portrayed as a tough SOB, so that's when he went to creative to ask for a change, and that's how he got his iconic name. That the ringmaster didn't have staying power, didn't have legs, hard to merchandise the ringmaster. Mm -hmm. I came up with the concept of just a cold-blooded, ruthless hill. And they came back with names like Fang McFrost, mm -hmm. Otto Von Ruthless, and Ice Dagger. Temperature-based names. I yeah. was very frustrated. My wife at the time was from England. She made me a cup of hot tea. And she said, well, don't worry about it. You'll come up with something. Just go ahead and drink your tea before it gets stone cold. That's your uh, name. Stone Cold Steve Austin. So That's so cool. Just... Those little things, that's how they become synonymous and big and global. Just because she said, hurry up and drink it before it gets stone cold. Boom. There it is. Because the names they gave were fucking trash. So <laughs> that, that's. If he didn't have that drink that day, that tea. Would we have stone cold? I don't know. <laughs> It wasn't until the King of the Ring pay-per-view in 1996 that the Texas Rattlesnake was officially born. At the event, Steve Austin defeated Jake Roberts in the tournament's final. It wasn't particularly the match that fans remember today, but it's what happened after that made Steve Austin a household name. Stone Cold would cut a promo in which he taunted the religious beliefs of Jake Roberts and uttered the famous words, Austin 316, for the very first time. Talk about your Psalms, talk about John 316. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. 
fans began to take Austin seriously from mm-hmm. that moment on and it was oh, crystal clear who would be the top guy in the company for the years to come. On the flip side of the coin, the company saw that Rocky Maivia was a major flop and The Rock needed a change. So in August 1997, The Rock turned heel and joined the Nation of Domination stable and quickly became the leader of... It's crazy what a good heel turn can do for you, bro. What a, 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 a character change can do for a wrestler's career. It's... It, it it works most of the time it works if you want that guy to be a potential top star you give them a little bit of character change you give them a little bit more freedom to really dig into that new character change you'd be surprised what comes out of it man of the group it was at this point that superstars began referring to him as the rock as he hated being called rocky maivia so mm-hmm. it was with the help of pat patterson he managed to get his name changed to the one we all know him by now the birth story of the rock is my original wrestling name was rocky maivia which was a combination of my dad's first name mm-hmm. and my grandfather's last name because both of them were pro wrestlers. And I hated the name. I hated it. The lineage I had gave me the opportunity yeah. to at least knock on the door. Space. I wanted my own identity, yeah. I wanted my own space. So I was very proud to come from who I came from with my dad and my grandfather. Uh, a guy who was my father figure, Pat Patterson. Yeah. He said, what do we call you, The Rock? The French mm. guy, the tough French accent. I said, I love it. He goes, okay, you're The Rock. So as weeks went by, The Rock became more popular with the fan base. Every week, The Rock would cut promos either in the ring or backstage using a sharp sense of humor to belittle his opponents and the fans. The company began to notice the hundreds and thousands of fans that would be on the edge of their seats to see The Rock appear on TV. So WWE wanted to capitalize on the momentum and they didn't waste no time in pushing The Rock to the main event scene. Shut up, bitch! As they should. It doesn't matter what you were born. <laughs> Big Daddy called the rocks ass more like Big Daddy bitch. What did he say? Hey. <laughs> It's a good video, man. As a result, it was inevitable that these two would meet in the ring. But many fans seem to forget the first time these two legends crossed paths for the very first time. Before they were battling for the WWE Championship, The Rock and Steve Austin were feuding over the IC belt. So on November 10th, on an episode of Raw, we finally got to see these two interact for the very first time. If you got enough manhood to accept my challenge, then your bottom line will read, has been, compliments of the rock <laughs> i got a couple of challenges for you i challenge you to get you a decent haircut <laughs> <laughs> the feud commenced with the nation of domination attacking steve on raw and the rock made it clear he was coming after the prestigious intercontinental championship so at the degeneration x in your house pay-per-view steve austin will go on to defeat the rock in just under six minutes to retain his championship and in the following episode of raw we saw vince mcmahon ordering steve to defend his title once again against the rock As an act of defiance, the Texas Rattlesnake threw the championship inside the river, forfeiting the title to The Rock in a memorable segment. Mm -hmm. I really don't give a damn about you or the WWE, so I'll see you a little bit later. (laughs) Little did anyone know that this would be setting up the feud between the Texas Rattlesnake and Mm -hmm. Vince in motion. However, the story would come full circle one year later. The rivalry between the Texas Rattlesnake and the evil boss himself is the stuff of legends on its own. However, the on-screen chemistry between Vince and Steve Austin was cherished by everyone. At the time, the storyline was regarding a defiant wrestler who went against his boss was unheard of. And things were just getting better and better for Stone Cold, considering this was the boom era of WWE. Mm -hmm. And also taking into account the all-time classic he had against Bret Hart at WrestleMania, Steve Austin at the top of the card made all the sense in the world. So as soon as Steve Austin won the WWE Championship from Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 14, he continued to feud with the corporation. While The Rock was still in the IC picture, despite not being in the world title program, The Rock didn't show any signs of slowing down. With feuds with the likes of Triple H, The Rock's popularity continued to see an upwards trend to the point where he was turned face for good. It was clear mm-hmm. The Rock wasn't going to remain in the shadows of Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's about to go. <laughs> with Steve Austin Thanks. already in the main event scene, it was only a matter of time when the Rock would be inserted in the world title picture. At the annual event of the Survivor Series in 1998, The Rock joined hands with the evil faction, The Corporation, and defeated Mankind in a controversial manner to become the WWE Champion, turning heel in the process. And The Rock played the role perfectly, and at that year's Royal Rumble, the two would meet again in a now infamous I Quit match, where The Rock would go- Yeah, him turning heel and aligning with Vince was so good, because it 
he was already skyrocketing, but then it really put him in that upper tier because now you're with one of the most hated people in the company and Vince McMahon. And now you align yourself with him after screwing over mankind. And now one of the biggest baby faces in the company that's been beefing with McMahon for a while. Now he has that person he can actually beef with on behalf of McMahon. And they're both great when it comes to in the ring. They're both great when it comes to their promos. They have history. Bruh, that's just money. Just all about the dollars, as Vince McMahon would say. All about the moolah. Just money printing itself. Go on to win, but not without some controversies, as he had mankind handcuffed and then proceeded Ooh, to hit him in the head 11 times brutal. with a steel chair. The scene was brutal, and with that, the stage was set, with Stone Cold being positioned as the number one guy in the company and The Rock just behind him as number two. This had all the makings of a perfect face versus heel match. What also happened at the Royal Rumble event in 1999 was Mr. McMahon decided to enter the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. match, and with the help of his allies and The Rock, he eliminated Stone Cold to win the whole thing yep oh i was so mad so mad i was so pissed Oh, and on so the following pissed. night on Raw, Vince forfeited his opportunity of the world title match at WrestleMania, indicating that The Rock wouldn't even need to defend his championship at all. But things didn't go to plan for the corporation, because the WWE commissioner at the time, Shawn Michaels, informed the whole world that the runner-up of the Royal Rumble match would be The Rock's opponent at WrestleMania 15. This meant The Rock would come face-to-face -face with Steve at the grandest stage of them all. Mm -hmm. The fans were struck by anticipation. After all, we were witnessing history in the making, so when the match took place at WrestleMania, WrestleMania, The Rock fought hard and showcased his desperation to become the man to put an end to the top guy in Stone Cold Steve Austin. And even with multiple distraction and interferences, Steve was able to put down The Rock and become the new WWE mm -hmm. Champion once again. This wasn't the only main event between the two at WrestleMania, nope, nope, as they nope. were destined to do it again, but things will get even better and more personal next time. By the time 2000 rolled around, Steve left to deal with a neck injury, meaning there was a top spot left wide open, and who else better than The Rock to fill that? That huge void. and that that's 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 the brilliance of having top talent even when one goes down one has to you know leave for injury whatever the case may be if you have a solid roster that you've invested time and energy into they can pick up where the other person falls off simple if you put all your eggs in the one basket and you hadn't really built up anybody else have we you know what we've seen not i wouldn't say recently but in previous years especially during the john cena era they didn't they weren't building up other people they had to organically just happen to get over and and be built up because it just happened that way but if they weren't really investing into other options and when you do that and your top guy gets hurt now you left with people that people care about but they're not the top star and now you have to put them in that spot and sometimes it doesn't it, it doesn't work but with the rock it worked out perfectly i mean absolutely perfectly and despite the fact that vince and the rock knew he was filling in for big shoes his popularity was so strong and honestly it was so infectious because it motivated me and drove me it's what i wanted we were rivals because he was trying to get the top, I was the top. Yeah. So with his relentless desire, The Rock used this opportunity to become the top guy the company needed at the time and mm -hmm. prove he could be more than a superstar that was meant to drop the championship mm -hmm. to Steve. During this period, The Rock would be turned face and end up feuding against the corporations. So by the early 2000s, The Rock was looking to become a world champion again. At that year's Backlash pay-per-view, The Rock faced Triple H in the main event and Steve Austin was scheduled to appear at the event. However, as the event progress it felt like steve wasn't going to show up mm -hmm. and you could see it in the fans faces and during the main event when it looked like triple h had the match won and just when all hope was lost steve austin appeared yep. <laughs> Look at that, bro. <laughs> steve austin has won. 
crowd, the crowd fucking crazy. bigger than ever, it's still considered one of the greatest WWE Championship matches of mm -hmm. all time. However, despite joining hands at the end of the match, things were far from being over yeah. between the two. And WWE had a unique situation on hand. It's rare that two baby faces would face each other in the ring against one another. As we all know, traditional storytelling in WWE usually goes bad guy versus good guy, with yeah. good guy overcoming all the odds. Yeah. So at the 2001 Royal Rumble match, The Rock and Steve Austin came face to face once again, and the fans went crazy mm -hmm. over them in the arena. And if this was a test from Vince in terms of storytelling to see how fans would engage these two going against each other again, simply put, it exceeded all expectations as the fans loved it. So this was the stepping stone for another match oh, at WrestleMania, and Steve Austin would end up winning the Royal Rumble match for an unprecedented third time. On the other hand, The Rock would win the world title again a month later from Kurt Angle, and the feud was set ooh, between ooh, the two ooh, once ooh, again. And this. Ooh, this promo package the promo build for this match will always give me goosebumps my way my way of the highway oh man bro just that oh they man you know wwe is really good with their promo packages they sold this he's like rock i i don't i don't just want to i need the wwf championship i need to beat oh just what i can't even can't put words <laughs> it's just great this time things got way personal so to kick things off steve's real life wife deborah was ordered by vince to be the manager for the rock both the rock and austin were against this and stone cold mm -hmm. made it clear that he would be beating the hell out of anyone who tried to harm his beloved wife and things started to get more heated with the passage of time as Austin's patience was being put to a test. And during The Rock's rematch against Kurt Angle, Deborah got herself in a predicament where she was placed in an ankle lock hold. Austin seeing this made him lose his mind. Yeah. He beat the hell out of Kurt Angle and The Rock. And for the next few weeks, The Rock and Steve Austin fought ferociously mm -hmm. and the main event of WrestleMania was getting more and more exciting. The sit-down interview with JR Ooh. summed up everything perfectly. Is I never asked for Deborah to be my manager, yep. never wanted Deborah to be my manager. I'm supposed to be your manager and, and I'm wrestling you for the World Wrestling Federation Championship at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's a problem. I don't like the tone in your voice when you mention my name or my wife. The fact is, Rock, you got the WWF title mm -hmm. and I want it. There can be only one. Oh, so when the good. second main event between the two icons took place, things came full circle when Vince McMahon inserted himself into the match. And the Rattlesnake had a significant advantage in the home field as the yeah. no DQ main event commenced. The match started off with a fierce battle with Austin dominating from beginning to end and the focus of the match was Stone Cold's desperation and The Rock's yeah. resilience. And it was Austin who took the initiative by introducing the ring bell which was later returned by The Rock. Then Mr. McMahon made his way towards the ring. Adding to the history with his feud with Austin, it seemed like the chairman was once again planning to betray and sabotage his longtime rival. However, there was a big twist when Mr. McMahon pulled The Rock yeah. off Stone Cold and after a last ditch low blow from Stone Cold to the Brahma Ball, Vince McMahon's <laughs> true intention became evident when he struck The Rock with a chair. The fans were shocked as The Rock managed not only to kick out but yeah. also deliver an impactful rock yeah. bottom to Steve Austin <laughs> and then went for the cover. And once again Vince interfered during the pinfall attempt by getting involved and this prompted the people's champion to unleash his wrath upon Vince but unfortunately as he turned around he got stone cold stunned. but nevertheless The Rock displayed great perseverance as he kicked out kicked yet out, again. Bro. With desperation reaching its peak for Austin at this point he resorted you and what's crazy if you go back and watch this match, they were booing The Rock. And the, it, Stone Cold was the overwhelming favorite. Like, he, nah. They didn't care that he was using a chair, that he was aligning himself with Vince. They didn't care. They just wanted to see Stone Cold win. That's Go back and watch that, the actual match. Anytime The Rock was really getting some offense, yes, he had cheers. But it didn't matter, bro. They were, It was pro Stone Cold. Stone Cold could have hit him with a damn truck, and they still would have cheered him. Using the chair against Rock, hitting him multiple times until considerable <laughs> damage had been inflicted towards him. And finally, towards the end of the match, with Vince by his side, he will pin The Rock to win the WWE Championship once again. I must say, these two just made history. Everything about this was amazing. The brawl, Jim Ross on commentary, the yeah. hot crowd, the amazing work between the two, and finally, the shot of Stone Cold shaking the hand of his old rival, Vince McMahon, is one for the ages. They yes, it's definitely an iconic shot, but I don't think they should, I mean, Stone Cold has said it himself, I don't think they should have turned him heel. Not that, that wasn't it. They shouldn't have went that route. But nevertheless, still made for some 
Very interesting television. It's no doubt that fans witnessed one of the greatest endings to WrestleMania ever. So after WrestleMania 17, Steve would align himself with Vince and Triple H, while The Rock became a babyface superstar once again. Mm -hmm. And it's important to note that these two wrestlers did meet each other at Survivor Series that year, as part of WWE vs WCW Invasion storyline mm -hmm. in a traditional 5v5 match. While both men showed great tenacity, the match concluded with Team WWE winning by Kurt Angle hitting yep. Stone Cold with the belt, and The Rock pinning him for the three count. So as time went by, The Rock was transitioning into his Hollywood career, while Steve Austin had multiple injuries and created differences with the company, indicating that his time as a full-time wrestler could be coming to an end. At the time, Vince That's wanted Stone Cold to lose to Brock Lesnar in the first round of that year's King of the Ring. With Austin being so hot, he didn't want to. He believed that their build to their match should have been the final, and it should have been properly built up towards. And this is where the for infamous sure. quote comes from, where Steve took his ball and walked away. Jim Ross calls me at the creative money not raw tells me long story short that i'm doing a job for brock lesnar i said oh really i said well if that's gonna be the case i ain't gonna be there so sure enough i woke up i had two bloody marys got on an airplane and i was flying back to san antonio and i was mad it ain't about winning or losing i'll let anybody beat me as long as it's for a reason it means something and there's money behind it and so I, I said, no, I ain't doing it. And I went home. It was over. I was done. And in regards mm -hmm. to his injuries, he said it best himself how hard the decision was as he felt as though he was being forced out. It's a hard business to get out of. I'm being forced out. That's just the way it is. Those are the cards I got dealt. I got a bunch of, got a bunch, bunch of problems. So my biggest deal is tomorrow, I don't want to get hurt. But I keep rolling the dice, keep rolling the dice, keep rolling the dice. I don't want to get hurt but I don't want to stink the joint out. Now the trilogy was set, but with Stone Cold having two victories over The Rock at WrestleMania, this amazing rivalry would have felt hollow had he not got a win over him. At this point, The Rock yeah. was more of an actor than a wrestler, and he was desperate to show that he could score a victory. So at WrestleMania, in a typical showdown between the two competitors, Classic both men match. engaged in back and so forth good. exchanges, mirroring each other's moves. Whenever one wrestler used the finisher of the other, the this other thought it was so necessary to good, do the same. Bro. And at the beginning of the match, Stone Cold unleashed a rapid series of attack. However, as the battle progressed, Austin would tire while The Rock would seize control. And just like the WrestleMania 17 encounter when Austin had to resort to desperate measures to secure victory, this bout presented a similar challenge. Mm -hmm. It would require three rock bombs to finally yep. incapacitate Stone Cold and for The Rock to claim victory over his greatest rival. In a touching moment after the pinfall, The Rock would look away from the hard cam, shove the referee, and the yep. two would share some words. We're both laying in the middle of the ring. And I sat up. And I remember I pushed the referee, Earl Hebner, away. He knew that I was going. He knew and that I didn't want to go. And this was a hard decision for me to make. I lowered my head down to Steve's uh, ear and I said, I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done. And then I said, I love you. That's awesome, bro. I remember just laying there in front of 70,000, man. That's man I love you too. What you talking about? <laughs> no, I agree, bro. This I've heard this story before, but oh my god, bro. This is why they're the goats. This is why they're my favorite wrestlers of all time. Their feud, their camaraderie, their brotherhood. You gotta care about somebody to make these feuds that have been just legendary stand the test of time and and putting on these great matches and trusting someone to make sure they don't hurt you in that ring time and time and time again the millions of dollars they have brought in just off of their legendary feud you have to have some type of love for someone on some type of level especially in the wrestling business to do what they've done so for him to cap it off like that like hey man just want to say i, I love you bro i appreciate everything you have done for me in my career because at the end of the day they they helped each other's career elevate to levels that we'll probably never see again. This shit means something to me, man. <laughs> say the rivalry between these two is epic would just be an understatement. The Rock and Steve Austin are responsible for not only putting the company on the map, but also breaking viewership and attendance records. Heck, 
You can even argue that these guys took out WCW because of their epic rivalry. And mm -hmm. at the time, WWE witnessed its highest TV's ratings ever, and the house shows and pay-per-view attendance were at all-time high. Pay-per-view buys were never the same after Steve Austin and Stone Cold called it a day. Despite the success John Cena achieved and his contributions mm -hmm. to helping the company move ahead in the absence of the two legends, some still argue that WWE was never the same. There's a reason why people pop huge when Steve yeah. returns on TV. There's a reason why people are eager to see The Rock return to fight his cousin. There's a reason why these two are always in the conversation for the greatest professional wrestler of all time. And Rats. there's a reason why WWE became the global phenomenon it is today. Yeah. If you like the video, guys, make sure to click this the thumbs great, up man. and subscribe. I, I got it, man. I'm going to go ahead and give this a like, bro. I'm going to go ahead and subscribe because this was fantastic. Y'all go subscribe to this video. Show him some love, man. This was well made. And it just brought me back down memory lane, bro. This is fantastic. I'm gonna link the original video down below. Show him some love. This was great. I'm man. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and watch that WrestleMania 17 promo. I got to just to get the feels. I'm, I'm literally after this video. I'm going back to watch the WrestleMania uh, main event promo between Stone Cold and The Rock. I gotta get the feels, man. But comment down below. Let me know y'all favorite match from Stone Cold and the rock let me know what's your favorite match from them out of all the matches they've had what's your favorite from them but i appreciate all love and support you guys shown on channel road to 150k and i'm still getting to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see you on the next one peace